Hi everybody, it's Dr. Dan here at the Balancing Center, and today we're going to continue talking about the foundational movement practices, but this time, instead of into your day-to-day -day life, we're gonna be talking about bringing them into uh, the mindfulness of them when you're doing your workouts. So the importance about the foundational movement practices is they do take your body and try to get the best leverage. Now leverage is what we can work against. And in this creation, there's always opposition, duality, and paradox. So whenever you're lifting or exercising, it's one thing to be lifting, but it's another thing to be engaging your body as you're doing it, because you can lift less weight with more effectiveness and also in a safe way, use less weight and know whenever it's time to start to, you know, add weight or do different things. So if I were to be using the principles of FMP, now I've gone opposite arm, opposite leg. When I go to sit, I wanna be sitting in my frame. As I go to engage the weight, I engage the weight, drop the shoulders, find my frame. Now I have resistance in my body. As I go a little bit further, I re-engage the body, re-engage the system, and then I can go completely while I'm still staying connected. Now, a lot of people stretch before they run, and while that's really good because it does loosen up the muscles, it doesn't necessarily give the muscles the experience of what they're working against. So if you go back into the walking pose where one leg is back and the other leg is forward and you turn your head and you close your eyes and there's this balance connection, finding your feet. And when we step back with the back leg into the walking pose and where we're the one leg is back and the other leg is forward, that's exactly what's happening in running is the hips need to internally rotate and find something to push through. When we're working out, we engage the weight. We find the leverage in the body. We re-engage the weight. We find the leverage in the body. And then there's this controlled experience and you know how much you can lift because you're controlling it and you should be getting right to the edge. And then when you're done with that, the whole body is in line and the whole body is connected. So we can use the movement practices to settle down at the end of the day or wake up at the beginning of a workout. And it's the same thing. You bend your knees, you push down on your feet, you lift your hips, you relax your belly, you take a breath. Everything we can do to bring our nerve systems, our endocrine system, and our myofascial system into present time continues to reset the resourcefulness, the agency, the engagement that we meet our life with. And when there's a lot of stress mentally, when there's a lot of stress emotionally, when there's a lot of stress environmentally, the more we can keep the body connected to itself from a place of leverage and resource and connection. So in each kind of exercise, there's usually an engagement, a stabilization, a re-engagement, another stabilization, and then you can move your body. Once in a while, while you're walking especially, and also when you're running, take one step back, that internally rotates and takes you to the ground. The second step back, internally rotates, take you to the ground. Third step back, internally rotates and takes you to the ground. And try to keep your attention more in the lower part of your body, sort of just above your pelvis, because that's where your center of gravity should be coming from. And as we get tired and tight in running and exercise, we tend to overextend the upper body and start to disconnect it from the lower body. 
and taking that step back, re-engaging again, and bringing this really into your life makes such a huge difference in the amount of um, healthy resource. And the more resources we have, the more we can handle stress without becoming overwhelmed.